Hi, this is Marcel of Marcel on Tech and today's video is going to be about earbuds. I've had a lot of interest in my earbud videos, so I wanted to share with you the variety of earbuds that are available. So what I've done is I've gone and ordered and bought and tested the most popular budget earphones on Amazon. And I wanted to share with you my thoughts on them and whether you should try them, but I'm also gonna compare them with some mid ranges I'm not gonna bother testing them against the high-end ones because that's just not fair, but I'm gonna try them out against the mid ranges So the mid ranges I thought to try them out against would be the OnePlus 2R, which are actually surprisingly good and sell for about 149 and these are the new CMF Earbuds Pro from Nothing as well. So those are my mid-rangers. And of course, my budget devices look like this. I couldn't even tell you their names because they're completely nondescript. I've got the boxes here, but they go by codes instead of proper names. Um, so this is a black one, this is a gray one. Let's get into it and talk about it some more. Okay, so let's have a little look at the design. Now, these are the <laughs> Batutos, don't ask me that name, Batutos A90 Pros. And of course, we've got the charging on the screen here. Now, on the, on the through the recording here, it looks like it's flashing, but of course, for me, it doesn't look that way. And we get these two bars here showing left and right as well as it charges it up. So the box itself, very, very plasticky, but fit for purpose, and of course, USB Type-C. We've got here these looking very standard looking shape and design with a flashing light microphone as well. And of course, it has the touch sensitivity with the indicator of left and right there. Moving on over to the Kichoni, Kichon, uh, give me some tips on how to say that. IT107s, fantastic name. Uh, and they come in all black and gray as well. Um, and this is the box itself. Again, it does have a more subtle, shall we say, charging indicator there. If I pop that back in, there we go. A more subtle charging indicator, which actually is more solid. So there's a better panel behind there. In terms of reliability, I couldn't really tell you exactly how reliable they are, but you've got the USB Type-C for charging and of course the linking button there, which is very important and the earbuds themselves actually look incredibly similar to the previous ones, but we can see this little design feature here and a light demonstrating connectivity with, of course, adjustable rubber tips as well. But again, the stem and the arm, very, very similar, charging pins at the bottom on both, and of course, there is some capacitive touch action there as well. The CMF, which are fast becoming some favorites of mine, as these come in a, what I feel is quite unique box, and I'm quite impressed by them personally. And uh, I think that they are very reliable, uh, and I like the design and I like the cradle. The magnetizing as it goes in is very strong, so it's a good solid magnet that snaps in place. You've got a little sync button there, and of course a flashing light to indicate connectivity. Um, and then, of course, all our details on the inside of the rim. It is a plastic box, of course it is, and this is not going to be metal in any way, but it's a good quality build with, of course, USB Type-C for charging as well. And then looking at the earbuds, they're a little bit more boxy, much less rounded. Of course, you've got the same sort of shape here towards the earpiece with adjustable earbud, but these are more uh, cornered, which I quite like actually, I have to say, it gives you much better grip and purchase, for example, and the touch sensitivity here as well. This has actually got six microphones built in, which actually does make for uh, voice calls very, very good. It was actually the, the most reliable one. With these two, you can tell you're using some sort of um, earbuds and they're low end, so the quality of the call uh, on the other end is quite low, unfortunately. So for actually making conference calls, video calls, uh, Zoom calls, etc., not the best. So those are going to let you down a little bit. But the CMFs were far more reliable, much clearer as well. And then, of course, the OnePlus here with the uh, DVN audio branding on the side. Again, a nice little aluminium flourish there with USB Type C. I actually, this is by far one of my favorite boxes of all. It re actually reminds me of the Sony um, MX5s. Um, or actually the MX range, because they have this kind of faux 
rock feel to them. It's actually quite bizarre. It's hard to describe, but it doesn't feel like smooth plastic like any of these. And actually, if you can hear it, it has this almost scraping sound to it, which is really nice in the hand. It's a very nice pill-shaped box. It's actually one of my favorite shapes and design. Um, and I really like, again, the gold flourish on the front there. And then, of course, opening the box up, we've got the sync button there, of course. And I have to say, these are by far my favorite designed uh, earbuds because, of course, you've got the proximity sensor there, so it knows when you take it in and out of your ear along with the charging pins. And you've got microphone port there. And you've got, of course, this really cool combination of metallic gold smoothly sinking into the plastic build of the earbud. These are definitely one of my favorite designed um, earbuds on the market at the moment, I have to say. Um, and in terms of quality, these are strong, but let's get into that a little bit more and talk about usability and how much they are worth your time and money. Let's move on. Okay, so now that we've had a little look at the design of each of the earbuds, let's see what they look like in profile in the ear. And I like to do that. So these earbuds, which are, of course, the, what are they called there? They're called the IT107s by, I can't even say that word. But anyway, the links will be in the description below. I'm going to pop them in my ears and you can tell me what they look like as fitted in my ears. So they look pretty snug. They fit well. They actually create quite good uh, passive noise cancelling. They don't have any active noise cancelling. So, of course, it's just going on. Uh, automatically, which isn't too bad. And they're actually quite comfortable as well. The buds are quite comfortable. I can't, they're, they're definitely blocking out sound. As we already mentioned, of course, you can see the charging and so on from the box. So that's quite handy. There is actually a charging number there. Now, if we try on the all black ones here that we've got, these are quite stealthy. They come in a different, a couple of different colors. The gray ones that I just tried on here, by the way, they come in about four different colors. These black ones come in two different colors. So they're actually half decent. And this is what they look like inside the ear. So again, they come with a stem. All of these devices, all of these earbuds have the arm um, stem here, which have uh, control functions or not. They all have the standard functions, which is, of course, to play, to stop, to skip and so on, but they don't have the volume controllers. One or two of them have the applications. The cheaper two, of course, don't have standalone applications, whereas the other two do, which is very cool. Uh, the CMF and the OnePlus, of course, have their own standalone applications to uh, manage EQ, etc. If you look at the profile of these ones, again, comfortable in the ears, not too heavy, and actually pretty good to wear as well. And the profile, I think, looks pretty flush as well. Okay, so those are the budget earphones. Let's try on now the CMF for me. Now, I do quite like the box of the CMF. It's a different shape. It's sort of this oval, as you can see. There's some branding there as well. So you can see how it's got the logo just been printed quite subtly. They come in three different colors as well. I actually really like the uh, aluminum flourish. It doesn't have wireless charging. In fact, none of these devices actually have uh, wireless charging built in because they're on the lower end of the scale, but it's no big deal. These have been very actually impressive based on their pricing. Remember, the pricing will be mentioned at the end. Now, these do have ANC, so this kicks in straight away. As soon as I plug them in, I can feel the active noise cancellation kicking in, and it works really, really nicely. So the packaging, again, quite clever little packaging here from CMF. And actually, not bad at all. Comfortable in the ear, lighter than the other two, but not markably, not, not like extremely just that these are very comfortable and easy to control as well using the tap functions as well on the side. But the ANC definitely kicks in and you can feel that as soon as you plug or slot them in your ears. Then of course, we've got the OnePlus Rs. Now these have been surprising and I have to say from a design standpoint, these are absolutely my favorite. These are normally retailing for around 150. You can get them on offer quite often. I actually got them free, uh, which is really handy because I bought the OnePlus Open and I got these as a gift. Uh, but again, this is not a sponsored video in any way. But if you look at the profile, you tell me which one you think looks the best. I do really like the gold flourish, but it's a bit more standing out. So obviously the others are a little bit more subtle, perhaps. These also come in one other color 
which is black, uh, but I quite like this white and gold version here. Again, these have A and C as well, and that kicks in again as soon as you plug it in and you can control the power of the ANC as well. So again, the higher end, but the price disparity, this is the interesting part of it, the price disparity between the CMF and the OnePlus is quite extreme. In terms of sound quality, which is what it's all about, that's where we really start to get the separation. So let's talk about that next. Okay, so the most important factor in relation to using these types of devices is gonna be three things, I would say. Active noise cancellation is becoming increasingly relevant and useful for a lot of people, just to be able to chill, block out ambient sound and focus on what it is you're listening to or even not listening to. Sometimes just having them in and blocking ambient sound is really, really good. So you're going to get passive noise cancelling with these two earbuds. Now, of course, it does depend on the type of rubbers that you're using on the end here, because of course they all have these spongy rubbers here that help to fill the ear canal and ultimately block it, which of course is where you get the passive noise cancelling. But in terms of sound quality, then I would say these two are basically on par with each other. The pricing is very, very similar. They're always on offer up and down. The price fluctuates here and there but they're both very, very budget devices, which you know you can tell because of the packaging. They both do have the um, charging capabilities lit up on the front here, which is a very useful feature because you don't have to guess it. Whereas the other two, which are more expensive, don't have that feature, but that is quite useful. And the battery life on these has been surprisingly good. I've been able to get at least 20 hours out of each one of these without even recharging it. And obviously every time you put it back in the box, it does recharge the earpiece. So you're gonna get plenty. And these are what I would like to call either for your children, um, if you're happy for them to use Bluetooth devices, um, and also happy for them to lose them easily because you know it's not gonna be the end of the world if they do. Um, but these are gonna be for your basic uh, ear audiophile activities. So if you need to listen to something quickly, if you are um, sitting in the car perhaps, or you're sitting in a waiting room, or you just want to have these thrown in your bag, um, in your gym bag, then it's not going to be the end of the world and they could be your backups, if you will. But what's going to be lacking most is going to be the mids and the, and the bass. The bass on both of these are a little bit, well, no, there's no little bit, they are weak. And so the immersiveness in the sound becomes very, very different from when you start to increase the budget a little bit. So bass and quality or depth of sound is what you lose with the cheaper earbuds. And that's what you would expect. But if that's not so important, or you just need to be able to listen to something, probably audio, for example, these will work just fine for you. Now, if you wanted to get a little bit better quality, I've been using the CMF as my daily driver until these arrived, which is the OnePlus, and they became uh, my daily drivers afterwards. So I was really surprised by these earbuds. These are the CMF earbuds pros, and they are 50 euros. For 50 euros, you're getting 100 euros worth of kit, I would say, by comparison to other earbuds that I've tested. So these are excellent value for money. Now, are they the best? Of course not. They are a budget device, but they are very good for the price. So the value is really good. They come in this color, they come in gray, and they also come in a reddish orange as well, which is kind of their signature color. Very cool. You, you've got active noise cancelling on these earbuds. Um, it does work. It kicks in as soon as you plug it in. You can feel it. You use it on the Nothing X app. Um, in order to edit and adjust the bass, but that's where these begin to lack and the disparity comes about from these two earbuds. The OnePlus, which are retailing for about 149 normally, but they can be on offer, 149.99, this is where they come apart. And when you start to play good in-depth, high-def music, whether it be through Spotify or something like that, that's when they start to set apart. And then you start to pick up on nuances. And that's when you realize that there's a difference between budget earphones and the slightly more expensive ones. These are still mid-level. But I was very surprised by how good these were. Aside from being very light in the ears and comfortable, the sound quality, as you would expect from the slightly more expensive, or that's what you would hope, is better from the OnePlus R's. But is the difference worth a hundred euros? I would actually say no, because there are other earbuds that are in this price range that 
might be even better. And if you want me to make a video about those in that sort of price range, put a comment below, I'd love to know. Um, but I was very impressed by the CMF and that was a big surprise based on it being their first attempt, although nothing have obviously made earbuds before, but the price is really competitive. So highly recommend those, probably recommended over because of price over all the others, but these have been surprisingly good. The, the OnePlus are of course the best ones because they are also the more expensive, but they are the best for me because comfort, weight, sound quality has all been right up there and I've been really, really happy with them. So if you would like to recommend them or if you've got any comments about anything that I've said in this video, please do put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to my next video, which is coming out very, very soon. Otherwise, have a great day and see you soon. Bye-bye for now.